The Height Y60 is a PC case that's taken the industry by storm. I've seen this thing featured on more YouTube videos than I can count. They've combined styling and functionality to create something truly unique, and buyers are lapping it up like water in a dog bowl on a hot summer day. Well, Height has done it again, but this time they decided to break into a different category with their new thick Q60 liquid cooler. And guess what? I got first dibs. Hey YouTube, I'm Danny, welcome to the channel. For those of you that don't know, Height is the sister company of iBuyPower, the well-known pre-built PC company. They introduced their first product in September of 2021 and have already established quite a name for themselves with their beautiful Y40, Y60, and the new Y70 cases. Height is committed to creating products that have artistic form and expert function while also keeping an eye out for first-time builders and enthusiasts alike. Height's thick Q60 is a perfect example of this. The Q60 is priced at an eye-watering MSRP of 300 US dollars. Now there's a lot here for that price. They give you a five inch IPS display capable of 60 Hertz refresh rate and 300 nits of brightness. There's a small yet massive 240 millimeter radiator that's 52 millimeters thick. It has a parallel dual pass design, maximizing cooler capacity and efficiency. This runs off dual in radiator harmonic pumps adjustable from 2000 to 4500 RPMs. Height's unboxing experience is quite unique. Come on, I'll show you. Height's box art alone is eye-catching and intriguing, immediately driving curiosity. Opening the lid greets you with a paper labeled rip for thick. So of course, I'm gonna tear it open. Under the protective cardboard is an excellent display of the Q60 and all components. All the accessories are packaged in this little cloth bag and separated nicely for each application. There is one double USB-C cable that plugs into the radiator of the Q60. It's got a six pin PCI connector, a USB 2.0 header, and a PWM connector for your CPU fan header. There's a loose bag with four spring nuts that's used for both AMD and Intel mounting and another one with eight radiator screws to attach it to the case. The Intel cloth bag includes a backplate, LGA 1150X and 1200 standoffs with four white spacers, as well as LGA 1700 mounting standoffs. AMD's bag has even less with just the combined AM4, AM5 pump brackets that can be used by sliding the pre-installed Intel one off both sides. They also have mounting standoffs with attached plastic risers. Height includes a well-illustrated instruction booklet, or you can scan a QR code to view it digitally online. The cooler is nicely protected and comes completely assembled, ready to install. The fans are oriented as a pull-through radiator configuration, but can be swapped around if necessary. No, the Height logo is not a button. That was my first question too. Just look at the sweet thermal paste design they dropped on the heat plate. If you're wondering how well it spreads, I made a short to satisfy your curiosity. You can find it below. Installation of the thick Q60 into the Height Y40 case was a breeze. Instead of fumbling around with cables and trying to keep everything out of the way, I just plugged it in after mounting the radiator and display screen into the case. Even though the Q60 is quite the chonker, it fits nicely into the case. They have an entire list of compatible cases for the Q60 over on Height's website, which I'll link below in case you wanna go check on that for your own case at home. I wanna pause on the Q60 review real quick and talk about Nexus Link. What is it? It's Height's new digital hardware interface giving the ability to support up to 18 devices on a single port or up to 54 devices across three channels. The thick Q60 is not Height's only product this year. So what else are they getting into? If RGB is your thing, Height has you covered with the LS10 and LS30 RGB light strips. The LS10 includes three 20 pixel QRGB arrays that are 330 millimeters in length. And the LS30 gives you two massive 62 pixel strips, each measuring 1000 millimeters. These can be mounted magnetically or using the included adhesive strips. Pricing for the LS10 is $39.99 while the LS30 is $44.99. If you wanna include Height's NP50 Nexus portal, it'll cost you an extra $30 to add to any kit. 
The NP50 is a small white box that fits any 2.5 inch mounting location and gives you a simple yet expandable way to control all of Heights Nexus products. The thick FP12 is their newest cooling fan joining the lineup. It's a 120 millimeter fan, but comes in at 32 millimeters thickness, hence the naming. Like many new cooling fans on the market, they connect using magnets and cableless electrical contacts. This makes for clean cable management and easy installation. The fans come in a three pack for $79.99. And if you're interested in learning more about these or the LS 10s and 30s, get subscribed down below for upcoming in-depth videos. The last product that Height introduced this year is not even out yet. And it's the Keeb TKL keyboard set to come out in May and we'll be unboxing it right here on the channel. It's also going to come in at 180 US dollars. Is it worth it? We'll find out. These Nexus Link products are the easiest setup ever. Everything just plugs into each other. The Q60 mounts in the case like any other, but when plugging everything in, it's just one cable that connects to the radiator. And that plugs into a six pin PCI power cable, a four pin PWM fan plug for your CPU motherboard header, and a USB 2.0 plug for communication with the software. If you wanna add any other Nexus Link products, they can plug directly into the Q60 as it has a USB-C port next to the RGB height logo. I plugged the FP12 exhaust fan into the cooler and then the LS10 into the fan directly with no other cables needed. Ultra easy setup and cable management. And of course, I can't discuss all the cool new hardware that Height has without talking about software. Download and installation was easy and comes direct from Height's website. The user interface looks simple at first glance, but is kind of complicated once you get into it. It's got a lot of widgets preloaded onto the Nexus desktop that I didn't really need. The beauty is Heights desktop is completely customizable. So you can delete the widgets that you don't need and keep the ones that are valuable to you. The ones I found myself using the most are cooling, lighting, and faces. Cooling may be the most important and easy to use, even though it looks complex. It's got three columns, inputs, curves, and outputs. All you do is pick where you want the temp to read from and drag the dot to what cooling profile you want. Height uses the Q60's pump temperature as the default input. I kept the balance profile and set my own fan curve by clicking the graph and dragging the dots. Then all you need to do is connect the fan curve you choose to the fans and pumps you want to be controlled and the software will handle the rest. It's that simple. Lighting seems like it would be the easiest widget, but it ended up being the most complicated simply because they have given you so many options. You've got things like animated, static, and music, which is pretty normal, but the one color choice I thought was interesting is screen mirroring. You drag the box to the area of your screen that you want the RGB to copy, and it will always mirror it. So the lighting has the ability to make whatever game you're playing look more immersive. Faces are how you control the pump head's display. They have preloaded background designs and foreground options like clock, performance monitor, weather, screen time, and media. They may end up expanding this later. In fact, the app focus tab says coming very soon. This will allow Nexus to change the face automatically depending on your application. So if you wanted to display a picture or video while it's just sitting here idle, it can do that. And if you want it to switch over automatically to performance metrics like CPU temps or GPU performance, it can do that as well. Now I wanna talk about thermal performance. The out of box settings used for the Q60 confused me at first. When I ran up some Cinebench R23 and Unigen heaven testing as I always do for my CPU cooler reviews, I felt the temps were a little high. After some software education, I figured out what was going on. Height has the cooling input for the fans and pumps mapped to the coolant pump temp in, and I'm used to the CPU temperature determining AIO pump and fan load. Height has informed me this is to provide the best cooling while also keeping CPU pump and fan noise down. My preferred cooling setup using the temperature input on the CPU resulted in a 5C decrease over Height's default settings. However, it resulted in a substantial noise increase as well. This is for both the pump and fan outputs. I think I'll stick with Height's out of box settings instead. Height's thick Q60 looks incredible and provides a premium user experience. Plus it was easy to build with. You don't even have to be a PC building expert. I'd say it was an excellent first attempt for Height to enter into a crowded marketplace. 
Also, it sets themselves apart from the competition. It may carry a hefty price tag and require a specific case layout to fit the components and match the style of the build. But I love that Height has decided to start at the top for their first liquid cooler, and I'm anxious to see what they come up with next. Thanks for stopping by, and remember, if you want to check out the rest of Height's Nexus lineup, hit that subscribe button down below and come back in a week or two to check out those videos. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next one. So let us dance this side away.